The next step is to fit the e-stop uh, circuit. Um, I have part of the e-stop circuit already in place. Uh, as you can see, I've got the start button, stop button, and the emergency stop. So uh, these are all wired in series. It comes uh, uh, through there across down to the e-stop button. But I also plan on having an e-stop from this connector which means I've got to get a cable from here down along here and that's this one so up until now it's been wired in to this uh, set of DINs that as you can see they're all wired together um, and I'm just going to cut the end off that and solder it in here so uh, as the sold this soldering will be quite tricky so I'm going to take this out as you can see I've already removed one of the nuts I'll take that out and solder it separately and then I'll just run a cable from here back around here and put it back in there uh, I've given myself a bit of a problem you can see I'll just zoom out a bit right so this cable is the control cable and if you trace that back it's going into the bob down there um, I don't know where to run it I where it is now is about where it's going to have to run I think uh, clip it across here and I'll have to put some of these I'll have to stick a load of those on there and then try and run that cable around across then clip it along here and to the four drives not ideal I would have liked it down in the in the cable trays but um, there just isn't room uh, when I add another axis I'm going to need another cable one of these cables and they just I can probably just about fit that down but I certainly couldn't fit another five on top of that there's um, th that it's not the end of the world though because of course these this cable the control cable uh, is running at five volts um, let's see as you can see just here PC plus 5 volts and these are neutral so it's a neutral switching um, so as they're 5 volts and these cables are 75 volts for the steppers yes they're shielded but it's better to keep them apart if you can so having having these run high up here as far, from, or as far away from the high voltage cables um, as you can get, that's, that's yeah, less chance of interference, all round better. The uh, <clears throat> the e-stop is now soldered into place. Um, you uh, nearly nearly made a, a schoolboy error in that uh, you've got to solder it in with the wires coming through the hole, uh, because of course otherwise how are you going to get it back? I, I suppose in in normally I could probably just um, say unscrew it from whatever connector it is there and then just feed it back through but in this case of course the cable runs up here and it's it runs all up here all up to the e-stop and that's all zip tied into place and in cable wrap and all the rest of it it had been a hell of a job um, so I had to I had to solder it with the cables through which made life a little bit more awkward than it had to be um, but as you can see I've got this this is the other wire, um, still attached to the spool. Um, now I'll just run this cable uh, back along here and back into here uh, to complete the circuit. And then I'll have to make an aviation connector uh, with just a simple loop round. Um, there, there is a switch. Um, let me see if I can't dig it out of the box. Uh, oh, there it is. So I do have a switch for it. Um, but I'm not going to put this on just for now. Uh, there's just too much chance of accidentally hitting that while I'm working on the box. And I've got the uh, I've got this this stop anyway. Uh, if I do need to 
to stop it in an emergency. So for now, this I'll just jump at this closed. But at least the uh, socket will be ready. Well, it seems I didn't follow the five Ps about proper preparation because I've screwed it up. Um, the fan wire is below these wires, the e stop wires. So now I'm going to have to take this out, unsolder them, lift this up, solder them back on and put the connector back in place. Because at the minute, when I try and put that down there, I can't put that up there. I suppose the alternative is I unsolder it here so I can pass the cables over the top. Or I could take the panel out and move the fan, but none of them are nice solutions. Um, so, yes, time to get the soldering iron out again. So just while I'm building the system, <clears throat> I made a little uh, shorted out e-stop connector here. Um, that will then, of course, that will that will disappear up into the body of the connector quite easily, and I'll just connect that onto the bottom here, and that will stop the e-stop from um, tripping all the time. Once the machine's up and running, of course, I'll have the, the proper switch in there. I've just tested the e-stop connector and it works a treat. Um, I powered on the machine, uh, fired it up and then just pulled the connector out and boom, power was killed instantly. So uh, that proves it works. Um, the, uh, the next step then uh, is to do the home and limits. The home, uh, the home is somewhat complex because that requires uh, four cables. Uh, the limit's quite simple, that's uh, just two, because um, the limit runs back to a relay. <clears throat> and I forget exactly where it goes, The just looking at the circuit diagram, um, the homing is done on these pins, and the limit I've got wired... I've got that upside down. The homing is done here and the limit is done up here. So it triggers the... Uh, looks like I've got the limits triggering the e-stop. So uh, I'll have that, that jumper. Essentially that jumper will run up to this connector. And then probably what I'll do for now is um, just wire up another plug with a, a jumper across it. So that I can just build. So while I haven't got the parts for the rest of the machine, I can just keep working on the box without the uh, e-stop being uh, set off all the time.